You're watching NCAA Women's Lacrosse on ACC Network Extra. And we're in Durham, North Carolina for number two Syracuse. Off to its best start in school history. And number 15 Duke looking to end a three-game losing streak. Welcome into Koskinen Stadium alongside Duke Attackman, former Duke Attackman, David Keith. I am Ben George. You see Duke trying to rally the troops a little bit here at the midway point because Duke came in with a lot of expectations, but 0-3. Yeah, a lot, of, point. a lot of talent on the team. A couple tough losses recently. One goal losses in the fourth quarter. Could have gone either way against Clemson and, and against Yale. And they're really looking to reset this game against a huge, huge, hugely talented Syracuse team. Yeah, and this Duke team might not have been playing as, as good offensively as they hoped, but Katie DeSimone has been solid from the start. Yeah, she's been the offensive engine for the team this year. She's a, she's the kind of player with a high IQ and will really use her body to, 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 in order to put, put her body in the line in order to score in any situation. So she's a she's really going to be the force for Duke today. On the other side, Syracuse's offense has been tremendous. Tops uh, nationally just about in every category. Yeah, you, you've got a healthy Syracuse team, the Tyrell sisters, Cockrell, all these different uh, ingredients all together. And then and Emma Ward is having a terrific season. Um, so it's really going to be hard for Duke to really try to match up these uh, Syracuse uh, Orange. The big question mark, though, for Syracuse is what will they do in the draws after losing Kate Mischewski, one of the best in the nation, out for the rest of the year. And they saw what her absence meant. They, they got out. Uh, the disadvantage against Loyola was 14-5 in that game. Yeah, I think it's a big opportunity for Maddie Jenner this game to really like be able to, as the coach said, you know, control the control the ball this this game, try to have the ball, be very poised, and, and take care of every possession. So, first part of that is getting the possession. Well, the, the attack's been very good, but also in the cage, Delaney Schweitzer has been uh, tremendous. Look at those numbers. Yeah, if you're 58% in the ACC, uh, the schedule they played to date has been amazing. So she just lights out this season so far. Well, we're set to go here on a beautiful day in Durham, North Carolina. It's Maddie Jenner, the career all-time draws leader against Olivia Adamson, who's kind of taken over this, this role that Mischewski let out. You got a whistle to start things off. And it will go to Syracuse. That will bring it back. It's a little, little hiccup to start, but this is going to be what we're going to be watching all day, right? Because both teams want to control the ball. Yeah, that's the name of the game. Yeah, we, and when we talked to Coach Kimmel this week, the question was, you know, do you against a team like this, do you push it? Do you play real fast and and, and more of a transition game, or do you slow it down? And um, I, I don't know if we, we have the exact answer uh, today, but we're going to we're going to see what Duke's strategy is. So Syracuse wins the draw to start things off and will go on attack again. One of the best attacks in the country, 16.4 goals per game, 10 assists per game as well. They can beat you with a number of different players, including Emma Tyrell, who just puts a nice spin move on early. And the first shot is driven home for Syracuse, a quick 1-0 lead. Yeah, that was one of the keys that, uh, that uh, Coach trainer, trainer said that they wanted to get to a, off to a quick start. And so right off the bat, this is part of their strategy, and that was a... Uh, wide, pretty pretty wide open uh, play on the crease set up here for Syracuse. We're able to really get the ball in, find the open player, use her body to position herself, and then put it right five hole. So it's Megan Carney. She fires it home. Her 30th goal of the year. She's kind of that. I mean, you look at that that list of uh, of scores for this team. I mean, she's at the top, but they they go deep. Yeah, their top their top six have over 170 points in the nation um, right now. So I mean, and that's that's not counting Baxter, who's number seven. So with Carney back, um, uh, you know, as a healthy, she coming off of the injury. Uh, there's just so many weapons. Yeah, Carney ranks top ten in Syracuse history for points and goals, and she gets the orange started today. The Duke wins one back. So Duke on attack, we're, we might see this maybe be their best offense with everyone healthy now, finally, it seems. Yeah, I think that right now, Duke is going to be looking at this almost like the BC game last year. BC came in number two, and Duke basically kept it, you know, within within a respectable range in terms of the their ability to, um, to uh, you know, keep BC's offense in check. And that's what they're going to need to do today to for Syracuse. Avoid a big early lead. A quick turnover on the first possession, and Syracuse is back the other way quickly. Straight to the cage, a shot stopped on that time. Shea Fitzpatrick, the senior, 
who's in starting. Another big area to kind of focus on for Duke with the goalie. They came in in the offseason, or in the fall, they had five goalies. Felt really good about where they stand. They had one had to medically retire, an injury to Kennedy Everson, and then Sophia LaRose dealing with medical issue as well. So they're down to just two goalies. Now. Well, you know, okay, it's, it's so then in that case, it's good to have a lot of choices. They have five goalies. Things happen, as Coach uh, Kimmel said yesterday on our call with her and, and you know you, 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 there's nothing you can do about it other than make sure that everyone's well prepared for every game and these goalies have a tremendous amount of one-on-one uh, -on -one time working on their skills um, independent of the team they work with them a lot so um, I think that, that you know they're, they're they're all of them are very capable this Duke attack averages 14 just over 14 goals per game which is 22nd nationally seventh in the conference so far they got off to a really quick start. The last few games have been a little bit slower. But, again, th we point to that Yale game last time out. It felt like, from Coach Kimmel's perspective, that they kind of maybe got their attack going all together. And we see it come together that time. Jenner, two to Bellis for the first goal. Very nice answer right there. Poised possession. Um, as Coach Kimmel said, valuing the ball, right? Value the ball. Don't make bad passes. And that was a really nice play that was set up and a good answer to Syracuse goal. You see she brings it back, Greco brings it around, and then all of a sudden right up there, great ball movement, moving the ball faster than the defense can rotate. Caroline DeBellis, known for her ability to distribute the ball. She has been incredibly efficient this year. She has 10 goals now, it comes on 11 or sorry, 13 shots yeah, total. And, and this season, one of the things they're doing also is they're bringing Maddie. Maddie's great on the draw. She's one of the best of all time, if not all time, right? So, But they're actually bringing her down and using her on the crease um, to distribute and also as a target um, for a quick shot. So you're going to see Maddie Jenner in those plays a lot um, in order to, in order to uh, create offense. And then she's been doing a really great job at that. Trying to get the sticks aligned. 1-1 one, one early on here. The thing to watch, too, for the Syracuse defense, uh, one interesting stat coming in is over the last five games, they've only allowed more than one goal in six quarters of those last five games. So this has been a defense that's been stout, and Duke trying to get off to a good start. They've got possession once again. Yep. Duke has a very balanced attack as well. 17 different goal scorers this year. It's Ava Greco. So Ava Greco has been uh, is a grad student um, from Wilton, Connecticut, and she's she's uh, been on the team now uh, for a few years. She had some injuries. She's really right now playing um, a role from behind, doing a lot of distributing. Um, she's a very good feeder, and she had a great game a few years ago against Syracuse, actually, where she had a number of uh, number of assists and goals. Duke working around to Bellis, back up top to De Simone. There you go. There she you draws go. the shooting space. So that's a very poised possession. You know, you're bringing it down, using the clock, and then drawing a really high quality possession, free possession shot right now. Another opportunity now for Duke. De Simone will go right at Schweitzer, but she makes the save. Laney Schweitzer, we'll see a lot of her today, but she comes up big in the first free position opportunity for the Duke Blue Devils. Syracuse leads this all-time series 7-2. This is the 10th meeting. I know Coach Kimmel glad to have Syracuse back here inside Koskinen. This is a game last year in which Duke had maybe its best first quarter of the season, got off 9-2 in the dome last year before yeah. Syracuse came back. Yeah, and, you know, Syracuse, it's Maddie, Maddie Baxter right now. She's a, on the Canadian team, very, very powerful player. Um, so many weapons that, the, that they have. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the thing is that, that Syracuse can go on a run, and, they, and then that's what they have to avoid. They have to make sure that there are no long runs here. The possessions are. That one nearly picked off by Missy Biscardi. She read it well, but could not quite get to it. The senior. Her and her sister have been tremendous on this defense for, for Duke. The orange working inside once again. See the sophomore Riley Trainer playing defense there. 
That's Tyrell. Is yeah, that Syracuse doing the same thing, very controlled offense. Same as Duke, taking their time, working the possession, for the, trying to get the best shot they can. Just eight on the shot clock when they fired that one off and it gets by, another save. That's really nice. So you gotta like what you've seen out of Shea Fitzpatrick early on too here. Yeah, she's, had, she's, holding, her, she's holding her own in the goal. Um, she's seeing the ball. You know, you can tell that she's seeing the ball. And uh, that sounds like a sort of a silly thing to say, but that's a goalie sort of goalie term. I'm a goalie dad, so um, you can tell when a goalie's really seeing the ball and um, locking in on it um, from the point of release. And that's the thing. And with Syracuse, I mean, these guys have, these, these girls have amazing shots. So um, good, good, that was a good, good stop by Duke. So Syracuse scored on its first opportunity, but Duke is. So strong now. We'll see if the Blue Devils offense can give the team its first lead this afternoon. Anna Callahan surveys. Duke will swing it around one more time. Back up top. De Simone, always dangerous. This zone defense that has given Duke a lot of issues this year too. Yeah, there's De Simone. She's second, sacrificing her body, caught it, caught an impossible pass, and then went down. There's a foul. Looks like a cross check against uh, Syracuse. So it'll be DeBellis. But just 10 on the shot clock. She probably, yeah, she's gonna pull it out, try to get a better angle. Try to get it inside, but yep. De Simone has it knocked out of her stick and Syracuse causes the turnover. Now it's gonna be hard to really get it in there. You know, Syracuse with 10 seconds left, they know what that angle is on that shot and they know where they're gonna probably bring it. So they clogged up that center rate pretty quickly. Syracuse averages 10 cause turnovers per game. But this is sort of this is sort of what Duke wanted, a sort of a, a punch counter punch kind of game. If they can do this, and again, I reminded remind me of the BC game last year. It was a game where it was you know a, a goal up, a goal down, a goal up, a goal down, and you get into the fourth quarter and you realize well, we can play with these guys, you know. Um, and I think that that's what that's the Duke game that they're looking to do. And they're doing that right now. The key is, can they do it for four quarters? Yeah, I think this is a team that for Duke has a lot of confidence. I mean, they came in expecting to have a, a big year. Coach Kimmel said this is one of her more experienced teams she's had in a, in a while here at Duke. Again, not a great start, but they're trying to rebound. But Syracuse now back on top 2-1 after that goal. Yeah, that was that was just a poised goal. It's sort of, you know, their ability to really uh, work the, the the tight passes in order to get, to get the right shot off. That was a very hard shot for Fitzpatrick to save. So Syracuse on top now, 2-1 on this goal. Yeah, it was... Syracuse off to its best start in school history at 8-0 under second year head coach Kayla Trainer, 23-6 overall. She was one of the greats to ever play at Syracuse and not a surprise that she's got this team on track to maybe have a historic year potential. Yeah, she'll come in after Gary Gate and you know she came in um, with it as a, a really a ton of talent already on the team so it wasn't a question of you know recruiting or things like that although they do get great recruits and she's really just trying to continue the tradition and uh, put her own flavor on it. Now she's done that so far and the Syracuse team off to 2-1 lead here inside Koskinen Stadium behind two Goals by Megan Carney and a little question on the restart there. Veronica Hyman. Yeah. She is ends up being correct. She, she thought that hadn't started up yet, but it was intercepted. Either way, it's back to Duke's possession. And that was uh, Lexi Schmaltz. It looks like they were up around her head, and they called that pretty quick. So she's a really uh, uh, just high-velocity player. She up and down the field. 
She's got eight goals so far this year, trying to make it nine, and she finds it. That's a new career high for her first season. And Lexi Smalls evens it up for Duke. Yeah, Lexi's a really, again, a very, very high velocity, high intensity player. Her father played at Duke as well. Um, so she was uh, raised in this tradi tradition. Tradition. Um, and, you know, this is just really great shot placement. Um, she's got a really hard shot. She knows where to put it. Well done. Yeah, you see the, the shot by Smoltz to give Duke its second goal today. Evens it up 2-2. Two -two. So Duke off to a pretty good start, even as we expected. Duke team really trying to rally four and four it's, it's hard for the coaches they don't have to change a whole lot they haven't really gone out of their way to change anything they get so much better in leadership in this team it's just a matter of getting everybody back on the same page yeah, and just trying to rally around well them. this is again again a game game sort of the pace of the game right this is what they wanted um, again I, I, I'd love to see this but they have to execute it across four quarters um, and then and then get get into that fourth quarter they had a very close fourth quarter game against Clemson, a very close fourth quarter game against Yale. And so I think for their challenge is get into the fourth quarter and then get the breaks to have it go their way and to get that goal, that last possession. Yeah, Duke comes in 11-10 loss at Clemson and then a 15-14 loss against Yale. But there were a lot of positive signs in that Yale loss as well, especially with Olivia Corner back now the talented midfielder for Duke, back to full speed. Same with Katie Keller as well. And they, those two really sparked this, this attack for them. Uh, so we'll see if that translates today as Syracuse back on attack once again. Yeah, I mean, both of those players are very good at moving the ball from the defensive zone all the way up in transition. Um, they got a putt pipe there. And Ward off the pipe. The junior has been very good this year. She's had three or more points in all but one game including a seven assist game against Notre Dame. That's a big shot again by Carney. How about a hat trick right out of the gates? Yeah, she's just, you know, she's back, she's healthy. Um, and it's, it's it, when, before her injury, she was playing with both the Tyrell sisters and it was just one of those things where, where you know, where is the scoring gonna come from? A third goal today, 32nd of the season. Yeah, it was just, just a nice, beautiful read. Um, I think that the Duke defense could have been up on her a little bit more. You cannot give her that kind of space because um, she's a lights-out shooter. Carney has scored four more, more goals at that uh, outing against Notre Dame. It's been six of eight games this season. She's eighth, came in eighth in the nation in goals. She's got three more today. This is a player that averages nearly four goals per game alone, which is top ten nationally. Team has a lot of ways to score, but Carney has been the focus thus far. So once again, back to the draw, where it's been pretty even so far. Maddie Jenner, who broke the all-time record in NCAA history for draw controls. He's, there's Katie Keller, you know, if you see, she's lightning fast. She runs. Um, just like a gazelle, she's super fast. Uh, my, my daughter actually played with her in high school. I got to watch her. Um, she's a very good player. And like I said, can move the ball all the way up the field in transition. Um, is, great on, is great on the circle. So nice to see her legging it out there. This game's been back and forth early on. Just about five minutes to go here in the first. DeBellis and Schmaltz have the early goals for Duke. Nice pass right into the center. McCorkle does find space. Somehow finds the back of the net as well. Yeah. Perfect execution. Perfect execution. Finding those seams. You know, that, that's what you really want to be doing on a, on a disciplined uh, Syracuse defense. You want to be able to find those passing seams and be able to turn and shoot. Yeah, bringing it around, and then we have an up top pass down, down to the crease, turn and shoot. 
Beautiful, disciplined pass, way to get open, and the seams not not dissimilar than the way that the Syracuse offense is operating. They're finding those seams, they're finding those small opportunities where they can get that uh, that uh, that shot off that's somewhat obstructed by the goalie uh, for the goalie. Yeah, she didn't have a ton of space there. Defense converged pretty quickly. She took advantage of her opportunity and found. A little space past Schweitzer to find the back of the net. So a big goal for Duke to even it back up at three. Maybe it's a good sign from her Corkle. She had a four-goal game earlier this year against Gardner-Webb. So maybe a quick start could play into her benefit as well. So Duke, a broken draw, uh, but they were able to get the ground ball. And, um, you know, interesting in the Clemson game that we talked to Coach Coach Kimmel, she said their their objective was to get the ball on the ground. And so not, not let Maddie Jenner you know, get the ball in the air on the draw, and they, they really were putting a lot of physical, physical, um, you know, uh, moves on her. And um, it worked to get it on the ground, but today Duke's getting a lot of those 50-50s on the ground in the circle. Well, that was a big key in this game for Coach Trainer. She said they, one of the three keys that she had for this was for them to win the ground ball battle. Duke's had a little bit of an edge there early on, but that one turns right back over to the orange. Duke can't quite break through to get its first lead. Let's see if Syracuse can add another. Syracuse has just been so good defensively. So it's a good sign for Duke here early on. Yeah, and you can see that the, 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 the strategy we were talking about is are you going to run and gun against Syracuse or you're going to slow it down? And Syracuse is playing a sort of a settled game. They're bringing it down, they're settling it. They're, they're not playing a super fast transition game. So both teams are sort of executing the same kind of offensive strategy. Duke's got a veteran defensive team. Here's Emma Ward working to the left side. Bounce back after missing last year due, due to injury. She's been very good this year. 36 total points does Ward have. Coming off that screen there, she tries to get it back, but that's it's a charge. Uh, actually, I think that was a, a moving pick. Interference call. Yeah, it looked like Ward were trying to get it back off the screen, but she gets whistled for the violation, and Duke will bring it back down. So been back and forth. Duke still looking for its first lead here in the first quarter. Nice clear. Not not a lot of uh, not a lot of resistance from uh, from uh, Syracuse on the clear. Greco's moving the ball around here. Early in the shot clock for Duke. Spark Carly Bernstein behind the cage there draws a whistle. I think they again they, they Syracuse very very aggressive. They throw a lot of checks. Um, and that one was up around the head, uh, a little too close. So she's going to have a side hash free position. The sophomore from New Jersey, nine goals this year. Nice stutter. That one knocked away right to DeSimone. She unable to pick it up and control it, but it's eventually picked up by Duke, and they'll reset the offense. You've seen Duke get a lot of ground balls, you know? So sometimes, you know, they break your way, and other times it's just you out hustling. And they're getting a lot of those 50-50 ground balls right now. I think that's what Coach Kim wants to see. We're yep. outworked at Boston College earlier this year, she said. And, you know, to, to turn the season around, that's what it's going to take. But yep. Syracuse's defense, you see, stepping in and knocking that one away. That was Duke ball. And that resets the shot clock. Yeah, a reset. Hmm. Yeah, deflected off her stick. I think it goes to 60. I'm not sure. So we'll have a stoppage to... Sorted out here, but Carly Bernstein is, is someone that you you kind of targeted as someone to kind of keep your eye on. As the attention obviously goes to uh, De Simone quite a bit in, in Greco, but she's someone that could maybe step up. You think? Yeah, you know, a lot of times when you have like dominant scorers, a, a defense is going to put a lot, throw a lot of its resources around those scorers, and then you have someone who's maybe like a third attackman, fourth, and they're going to go in the game and be able to. Um, really pick up, you know, um, and be open, have the ability to get shots off, and she's actually capitalized on a lot of her opportunities this year. 
So just, they reset it to 23, so under 20 now on the shot clock for Duke. So deflection, but no reset, which is what I thought it should be. 10 seconds here, DeSimone is able to draw the shooting space once again. One free position opportunity already for her today. She was unable to get it by as Schweitzer will see here if she can to give Duke its first lead today. Right to go across the front, but over the top. Backed up by Dukes, quick reset. Quick She'll start in, again. tight pass. The shot clock violation, the defense stands strong again for Syracuse. So Duke, a couple opportunities to take a lead. Not been able to do so thus far. Yep. But, you know, on the, on, on the one side, you know, where possession is not being, you know, completely controlled by Syracuse, right? You're seeing a pretty even time of possession, which is, again, what's, what, what Duke was interested in, in doing, valuing the ball. Um, and they've, ha they've held on to it. So even though they didn't score that time, um, it was a decent possession where they got off decent shots leading to free positions, things like that, so. Drop off to Carney, pass into the middle Tough between pass. two defenders. Trying to get it to Adamson that time, but knocked away. The other question was coming off that Loyola game, as you see Carney putting a lot of pressure on the ride, was did Loyola maybe kind of give you the game plan for going against Duke, right? Being patient, or, or going against Syracuse, being patient, right? And not giving them a whole lot of scoring opportunities. I, you know, I think we had an injury. Yeah, foul. We'll go on Duke. So the final 10 seconds of this first quarter, back and forth, neither team's had it. Well, Duke hasn't had a lead. Syracuse's biggest lead was just a single goal. We're going to finish this thing 3-3. So six goals in the first so far. Yeah, very even game. Um, and I think exactly what Duke was looking to play. Um, and Syracuse is probably going to regroup right now and look at its strategy because Duke's, Duke's, Duke's hanging in there, which is uh, exactly what they, play, they wanted to be right now. Well, for Duke, it was three goal scores. The Bellis, McCorkle, and Schmaltz, but for Syracuse, a hat trick for Megan Carney to start things off. No surprise there, the team's leader gets the orange off to a good start. About to start the second quarter here from Costin Stadium, all square, three apiece. Three goals for Megan Carney. We are yet to see Meg Tyrell get on the board. We expect to see that today. She's got 23 goals, 47 points for Tyrell. She has an assist today, but she's moving up that career list and chasing her head coach as well, Kayla Trainer, who second in Syracuse history. Yeah, and she's and she's also a, you know a current player as well for the world world team. She's so we, you're talking about someone who really understands the game in its very present form. You got to think what so 40 points away. You think she can get there this year? Uh, it, you know, it, it depends on how many runs they go on. Uh, they've got, they're playing in the ACC. It's a, they tough, there's some tough games still coming up. Uh, but uh, anything's possible with the Tyrell sisters. They're amazing. She's got 47 points midway through this season, so on pace to get there. Something to track for Syracuse, but she's one of the best to play for the Orange and being coached by <laughs> one of the greats in Syracuse history. So we're set to go here, second quarter, 3-3. Three, three. I think you know, Duke's kind of right where they want to be, but I still think even if you look back at that first quarter, Duke, five turnovers. I think they had a lot of opportunities that they maybe missed out on. Well, yeah, turnovers also are sometimes misleading because, um, yes, they are unfortunate, but at the same time, sometimes a good defense causes turnovers. So right. um, it depends. This is a great Syracuse team. You're going to see um, some of those forced turnovers um, coming coming your way. And that was that was sort of a blown transition opportunity uh, that left wide open player in the middle. So be Natalie Smith saved, knocked save. away by Fitzpatrick. Beautiful save. That's one of the hardest things to do is a, is a straight on free position save. Um, balls moving super fast. You got to be react, you know, within a nanosecond. So Syracuse, nine shots so far, seven on goal, six for Duke. They have four on goal. So pretty even 
thus far through the first. Yeah, I mean, Duke, I, as, a, as a team, I think that they're right where they want to be. Now you see the big shot that time yeah. by Syracuse. Matty Baxter. That's Cockerville, actually. Yeah. She has been tremendous of this year for the Syracuse team. And you see she's got a rocket of a shot. She, she does. She, she has a cannon. She's a, she's a tremendous athlete. She's come back off an injury. And she just does it right, right now, just a sweep dodge. They're not on her hands. And she throws it right high cheddar, high, you know, just right right up there. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Great look at that goal for Cockerville, the grad student who's been tremendous. Coach Trainer thinks she is the best midfielder in the nation. And, you know, you're, you're, you're playing alongside a, a bunch of really skilled players. You maybe get overlooked a bit, but she thinks she doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's great up and down the field almost in every, every you know, she's in the middle of the field. Obviously, she's, I've seen her take the draw a number of times. Um, she also uh, plays really good defense. And then, you know, uh, dodging, it's very hard to stop her. She's an incredible athlete, and she's got the size in order to get off that just rocket of a shot. Syracuse 4-3 lead. Jenner able to win one. You see that height and that length play to her advantage. Duke 6-3 lead in draws so far. But it just seems like we keep going back and forth. Syracuse takes a one goal lead, Duke answers, and you kind of feel like if, if one of these two teams can maybe go on a little bit of a run, start to take control a little bit. Yeah, I mean, right now it's about composure. I think the Duke, Duke has to say, look, we're, we're going to try to be, you know, hang with this team um, into the fourth quarter. We're willing to be down a goal, two goals, you know, what have you, and stay in it. Um, the Corkle off the post. Rolls all the way out, tracked down by Keller. You see her speed to get out there. Yeah, she, she, you see that speed, it's just incredible. It was a really nice, nice feed, uh, unfortunate post, but, um, you know, you got to take a lot of shots in order to score. And that's that's really what they're what 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 you're looking at there. It was a nice possession. Turnover here. Schweitzer has the ball. Debellis took her eye off that and eventually that one taken right back. The net open, but De Simone unable to scoop it up. Syracuse gets back just in time. It is Cockerville making the save there. Here you see the freshman superior Clark who is one of two freshmen starting on defense, but coach says she might be the most athletic player, the best athlete on the Syracuse team, just a freshman. Yeah, and that right there was a really, really good ride. You see D. Simone in there. She's all over the ball. She's coming up. So Syracuse now brings it over back into attack mode, up 4-3. It's Maddie Baxter right here. She's a pretty, pretty amazing player. Play. She's Canadian, and she, um, she really, you know, is, is, is one of one of their go-to people in high-pressure situations. A mistake that time by Syracuse gives it right back to Duke. So no, it seems like no team, neither team, can put together multiple possessions on offense. Well, this is a pri this is one of those prize fight kind of games at this point, you know, which is punch counter punch. And they're really looking to, um, you know, make sure that they limit their mistakes. It's not about going on a big run. You know, you're not going to go on a six-goal run against Syracuse. You might, but it's more about how do we limit our mistakes and, and keep this composure going into the fourth quarter. Duke looking for its first goal here in the second quarter. Is that one thrown away, but backed up well by Biscardi. Back over to De Simone, who's still scoreless today. Little hop and a skip. Back up top to De Simone. And around Syracuse, not giving a whole lot of space in the middle there. Syracuse continues to run that zone, which has given Duke trouble this year. They didn't come into the season thinking too much about the zone, facing a lot of man, but they've seen quite a bit of zone this year, and I think yeah. something they wish to work on a little bit more. Well, so the key to zone is, you know, you basically have you know, looking to move the ball faster than the defense can rotate and trying to make sure that all of your passes are quick and accurate. Um, 
This one Hawk runs out again, and it's just another great possession defensively for Syracuse. That zone holds up well. Yeah, that was, you know, that they, 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 they want to make sure that they're covering different areas of the field and communicating with each other. And the key for the offense is moving the ball so that the defense has to basically rotate. And then, then as they're rotating, finding those seams where you could get the ball in quickly and get a quick shot off. Um, it's, and, it, and, you know, you practice it all the time. How do you break, they call it breaking the zone. So um, you have to have really good athletes to, to do it on offense. Um, and um, obviously Syracuse has great offense, uh, athletes on defense. Under 10 minutes here in the second. Duke down a goal. Syracuse trying to extend its lead. Unable to take a two goal advantage yet so far in this game. Right to Cage, getting around. The defender is Tyrell, but saved by Fitzpatrick. Yeah, that was a really nice, you know, it was, it was a nice shot. She had a pretty good angle, but, um, you know, the eyes, Fitzpatrick's eyes were on it all the way. And, um, it would, you know, there wasn't really a fake or deception. She was trying to blow it by her, and she just saw it, read it right away. Well, you mentioned Fitzpatrick seeing the ball well early on. She's got five saves already in this game. Just one so far for Schweitzer, although she's had a lot of help with her defense in front of her. Surveying, trying to get back on the scoreboard here. Down a goal. Callahan gets turned away. Duke just trying to find space there in the middle. Yep. Looking for an opportunity. That's almost taken away, but Schmaltz gets. Okay, so that was checked. that was that was a beautiful play. She put it in there. Schmaltz had the smarts in order to drive to the goal and say, look, if you're not gonna foul me, then I'm gonna take a shot. And they fouled her. So now she's got a nice one-on-one -on -one shot, and she's she's looking to really. Um... She has one goal on a free position opportunity early on in the first, so we'll see if she can make it two for two. Schmaltz cuts across the front, goes high, but Schweitzer makes the save. Yeah, Schweitzer read that. As, as she cut closer and closer to the crease, it cut off her angle a little bit, and uh, Schweitzer just went Red, red, or red it going high. 50-50 ground ball, Duke's got it. Schmaltz again right there, I believe, yep. The long pass got watch, away. Syracuse gotta watch that, they're gonna get, they'll, get, they'll get a green card if they do delay, delay a game. The long pass downfield just like you, you too can far. See, you can see the power of Schmaltz. I mean, she's, just, she's down there taking free position and all of a sudden she's chasing the ball back, getting the ground ball. You know, that's the kind of, you know, stick to and effort you need in order to beat a Syracuse team. Um, and, you know, keeping the turnovers to a limited number. So here she is again. Schmaltz up top. Midway through the second quarter. Duke still looking for its first goal of the second. Nice fake up top and go low. Do it yourself this time. Why not? How about Carly Bernstein? Yeah. We, we talked about this before, but you know, she's, she's a player that when there's a t attention on a lot of the other big guns on the Duke offense, you know, you, you, you give her the opportunity to sneak in there and um, you know, we're one on one unassisted goal, beautiful. Duke and Syracuse tied up at four. Coach Kimmel has to like what she's seen so far from her team, but Coach Kimmel is one of the, the greats in this game and the only coach ever here at Duke. She's hoping to get this thing turned around after a four and four start. Yeah, she's seen so many different kinds of seasons and um, she's one of the best all time coaches, amazing resume. She knows what to do situationally throughout a game like this in a big, you know, against a big opponent. And, um, you know, her whole thing this week was value the ball, and they're doing that on the 50-50s. They're doing that with patient offense. And, um, you know, but Syracuse, you know, they're not going away. <laughs> Syracuse is in it to win it every single game. Jenner does a good job getting that to Keller, and she wins the draw for Duke. Can the Blue Devils take it, their first lead today? 
After that last goal by Bernstein to even it up. Four different goal scorers today for the Blue Devils. Yeah, and you see Dukes having success at the draw, right? We've been, we mentioned that before. You know, would that be uh, would that be an issue? And then and they are. Um, whether they're getting it straight in the air, Maddie Jenner is, or they're forcing it to the ground and getting a gutsy ground ball. Um, they they're they're having success in the circle, which is great for them. Yeah, so far seven three lead in the draws for Duke. Big question for Syracuse Lemischewski out for the season, who second best draw control leader active in NCAA lacrosse behind, of course, Maddie Jenner. It's D. Simone looking for space. And yeah, D. Simone's going to drive that. And she's going to put her body on the line in order to get a shot. You watch, you know, throughout the game. She does. She's she's a courageous dodger. She's had a few opportunities today, but. No goals, no goals and no assists so far for De Simone. There's McCorkle right in the center again, but she's turned away. McCorkle's find some, found some great space in the middle. One goal so far, but not that time. Well, the, you know, part of the lacrosse game, and as a former attack, and I can tell you, you know, you want to situationally read the goalie, right? And so now you're looking at it, you had a lot of chances to see where they're hot. And this goalie is hot up high right now, so they should really start getting the message, guys, put the ball on the ground and mix it up a little bit. Um, so a lot of these shots that they're having success with are in the same pl same place at the same tempo, and they really need to now show a little bit of variety, and that's fine. They can adjust to that, uh, but it needs it needs to be something that all of them think about. Syracuse back on attack. Adamson working right now. One on one. She's got some space cleared out for her. 4-4 game. Nice dodge. I mean, it's it's interesting. I'm looking at this game. I'm almost seeing identical play at both sides, you know. Spun off. Able to clear the defender away. Duke may be looking for a call, but it will be a Syracuse goal instead, and they're back on top, 5-4. Yeah, I don't know if that was just a slip uh, on the, uh, by, by the Duke defender. Um, you know, it, we did get a little bit of rain last night, so there's a, there, there's a, th th there was a little bit of wet field down there. I'm not exactly sure, as, uh, as we see, but it was an inside roll, and, you know, it was one of those things. Now, this is that right there. You know, that's a, that's a, a really nice save that Dogoli had eyes on it right away. And here's an inside roll, and the defender just fell backwards and lost her footing. Um, that, was, uh, that was Carner, and, um, you know, it's, that, that, that can happen, but it was a... Nice dodge by the by the uh, by Cockrell. Cockrell second today, so Syracuse, all five goals between two players, Carney and Cockrell. And Syracuse, back on top. It's been exactly the same, alternating goals the entire way through here. It's honestly, it's it's the game that Duke wanted because they, you know Syracuse can have a game where they go on a huge run, and they wanted to be in the in the contest and 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 exchanging goals, getting ground balls, that kind of 50-50 effort right there. Jenner wins it for Duke. She's bringing it in the crossover to Callahan. So this thing plays true to form. We might see another Duke goal here to even it right back well, up. Duke, you know, like I said, if Duke, if Duke works on it to get the same plays, you know they're getting shots off for that crease, but if they mix up their shots a little bit, um, you're going to have you know a little bit more success in there because that goalie's uh, cued into Duke's um, shooting right now. In the middle, DeBellis gets pushed back out. Duke finding some space in, in the middle, it seems, to, to get some opportunities. Well, they are. I mean, breaking the, breaking the zone is about being willing to make and find those quick open feeds into the center. Um, and moving the ball faster than the defense can rotate. Carey Nice gets around one defender in the center, takes the shot, saved by Schweitzer yeah. once again. Now that was actually nice, nice that she went low. I don't know, I think she probably wanted to put a little more power on that shot. Here's Baxter. Baxter across, she's going right at the cage. Duke trying to step in, but she shoots one wide as the collision happens right in front of the net. See Baxter speed, they like to outlet to her, the junior. She collides that time. Yeah, it looks like she gets full steam. She's super quick. 
super fast in the open field, taking it. I don't know if she had an open player, and they're looking at a uh, cross check to the body. Daddy Johnston came over. That'll be a yellow card, I believe. To close out on her, but it was a yellow on Johnston. You are correct there. And now here, a chance for Syracuse. Big opportunity to kind of pull out a little bit of a lead, get a little bit of a cushion today, because they have not been able to do that. Tell them two minutes. Oh, there you go. We're good. Officials will talk over that call. Lisa Clark, Bethany Buzzle, Ashley Jaggy. The crew today. It's under four minutes to go here from Koskinen and Ben George alongside David Keefe. We've seen a good one so far. Both teams trying to gain momentum here to the end of the half to carry it into halftime. Yeah. I mean, regardless of, of this, of you know, the score right now, let's see what this what happens. Uh, it's been a really good lacrosse game, really good. Cockrell will pull it out and let Syracuse set it up. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna run some clock and then work for the high high probability shot, given that they're man they're uh, player up. Playing with the advantage for the first time this afternoon. Syracuse 8-0 so far this year. Done it against a pretty tough schedule as well, which is what they wanted. That's why they chose to this open the season against Maryland Northwestern. They knew they had a good team with a lot of experience. Team with the will to win. They've shown that thus far. There's Emma Ward. Looks like she had a little bobble of the ball in the back. Ward gets it right back. Pass into the center. Beautiful look and finds a wide open teammate. And they convert the advantage opportunity that time, Megan Tyrell. Yeah, that's, I mean, you can see why they pulled it out. They wanted to really use their person, you know, having a, a player up and work for that really best open shot. Um, patient ball movement, Emma Ward comes around and looks on the crease, draws some, draws some attention. Meg Tyrell puts it right in. Yeah, Tyrell won't miss that one very often, will she? No. <laughs> No, that's in her, she, she does that in her sleep. One point closer to her head coach is Tyrell. That's her 24th goal of the year to go with 24 assists as well. Coming in, she now has a goal and assist today. So 24 and 25, 49 points on the season. Now the, the, the key right now is, you know, if Duke keeps it where it is, they're, I think they go in the locker room and they're, very, they're actually pretty happy um, if they um, can close the gap or, uh, um, you know, that that's e even better. And they just want to prevent more scoring at this point from Syracuse because they played a really decent first half at this point. And Duke, 8-3 advantage in the draw as well, but it hasn't translated on the scoreboard necessarily yet. So we'll see what they can do to finish off the second quarter, but Syracuse wins that one. So... The orange right back on attack. Seems to be a pretty crucial point here in this first half. Yeah, Carney's got the ball, distributing it behind. Syracuse will take its time. Be patient here. Three to one advantage here in the second period after a tie game through the first 15 minutes. They're running. Dropped off and it's a nice turnover. Good, good, good opportunity for some open field. Let's see, do they slow it down and you know, work on possession, or do they go to the cage and attack for some quick offense? Let's see what happens. Yeah, Duke is a team that wants to score out of transition. Haven't done it as much this year as they would like, but now fully healthy, They're hoping to do that a little bit more now. Here's McCorkle. Yeah, so they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna play right now through this and try to work for their best shot that they can take. Jenner in the center, her height shot maybe off the post again. Yep. Tracked down by Superior, beats her to it. Another high shot. You know, you, again, I, I think that I think the goalie is is totally dialed in on Duke from a high high shot. So, got to look at look at trying to change that uh, that option out a little bit. Schweitzer's done a fantastic job. She has indeed. Four saves thus far. She's faced eight shots total. 
So creeping up closer to that 58% save percentage, which is towards the tops in the country. But Syracuse now has a chance to add to its lead, just under 90 seconds to go. 25 second difference, shot clock to game clock. Tyrell working against her defender, finds a cutting teammate, but it's knocked away. Nice heady defense by Duke. Traced down, tripped that'll up. Be, that'll be a Duke ball. And a yellow with the push. Okay, so Duke's got one minute and, and possession of the ball. So they're gonna try to qu quickly move it up the field. It's a great defensive effort. Here's a look at the foul there. Yeah, guts, gutsy play. You know, 50-50s, this is what they wanted to win. And um, in this case, it was just a push from behind. It, pretty inadvertent um, from the Syracuse perspective. But um, Duke wants to get it up the field as fast as possible and um, work, work for a nice nice play. And, the, and probably feeding the crease again. They got Maddie Jenner down there. If you look, she's going to be on the crease probably. So the shot clock turned off, two minute penalty. So you think Duke still tries to score fast or tries to work this thing well, down they, to get the last shot? They got a minute, but I guess they just said it's a, the penalty was to the head. So it's it, I think it's unreleasable, which means it's two minutes. So if they don't get a, off a good sh good opportunity, I believe they would start the second half with the ball. Um, so 45 seconds, see what Duke will do here. That's only if it was to the head, and that would be a non-releasable. Duke just one goal so far. Here's Jenner again in the middle. Closed out. 30 seconds. De Simone looking around. They're, they're player up right now, right? So they just take their time. They have the advantage and work for that open shot. Working a lot through Jenner. That pass gets by a teammate, a falls to Bellis. It's a great look. Very fortunate. Great look. 12 seconds left. Last chance here for Duke. It's Jenner up high, and she finds the back of the net. Duke takes advantage of the advantage and cuts it to 6-5. Yeah, just a really well-executed play. Patient, they got that first really nice shot off, chased it down, had the back up, brought it back around, and then found Maddie Jenner, who's Really nice play, they brought it back, and then they just found Maddie Jenner. She's a, she's a really you know, big target there. She's six foot two, and she knows how to get the ball and put it where it needs to be. Maddie Jenner with the big goal for Duke, but more importantly, cuts that lead to just one for Syracuse here in the final second. So a good note, I think, for, for Duke there to finish the half potentially with that goal and a little bit of positive energy going into halftime. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're Duke, you're executing your game plan. Stay stay close, get it into the fourth quarter, and, you know, it, it, it creates a contagion on the team. Like, we can do this. We, uh, you know, this uh, I believe we can do this. And uh, I think that that's what's happening right now. Um, funny, you see that in some of the NCAA games yesterday in basketball. You know, some of these teams that just don't, they, they stick around, they stick around, they get into the fourth quarter, and they win the game. Um, and you know, so Matt March Madness is here to, is here in lacrosse as well. well. Maddie Jenner seemingly scored her goals in bunches this year. She's got three hat tricks. That's her 13th goal of the year, and that'll end the half. 6-5 Syracuse lead. It was really back and forth, very even through the first half. Yeah, I, th I think Syracuse is looking at this and saying, that, you know, like, these guys are for, are for real, obviously, and Duke is saying we executed our value the ball game plan extremely well. Great on 50-50, great on 50-50 ground balls, and um, they're playing tenaciously. Five different goal scorers for Duke, and a hat trick by Carney to lead the way for the yards. Trying to remain undefeated here. Duke trying to get back on track. The second half coming up. About to begin the third quarter here. Syracuse on top, 6-5 over Duke. For the Orange, their goal leader, Megan Carney, a hat trick already. Yeah, she's a scoring machine. She uh, she really knows how to find that, put the ball in the back of the net, and um, she knows how to get open. If you look at how much she's, she is, she plays, she comes in and here, and she knows when to shoot. When the defenders are slumping off of her a bit, that's when she's gonna pull the trigger. And she is a real, she's a sniper, real sharp shooter. She had three goals in the first nine minutes of this game. For Duke, the big story's been missed opportunities. 
Yeah, a few. You know, some of those are forced, are forced by good defense by uh, by Syracuse. But at the same time, you know, you're playing against the second the second ranked team in the nation. You got to place your shots really well in order to beat them. First nine goals of this game, they alternated back and forth before Syracuse finally gained a two goal advantage. But there you see the free possession shots. Dukes had some opportunities. But it's been a very even first half. It has been, and, and Dukes has done, done very, very well in the, in the, on the circle. Like we're going to see right now, you know, not only just Maddie Jenner getting the ball in the air, but also getting it on the ground and winning those 50-50s. It's been a really big, big uh, game for them where they've, they've, they've ex probably exceeded or, or at least matched what they wanted to do. Well, Adamson's been the one in the draw circle primarily for Syracuse today. Kate Mischewski out for the season with a lower body, body injury, and Duke's had the advantage. That's the ninth draw control win for Duke yep. to just four for Syracuse. Yep. And they're you know they're they're putting the pressure on on uh, on Syracuse um, on the ground when they you know so that the Maddie's sort of protected in that regard. Well, Duke did score with six and a half seconds to go in that second quarter, so a little bit of momentum heading into. Halftime, if you're Coach Kimmel, down, haven't had a lead this entire game, but been right there. What changes are you making in the second half? Actually, I'm, I shoot low. That's the only thing I'm saying, man. You guys, you guys have executed the game plan. You valued the ball. That's what she said to us, value the ball. And that, that comes in the form of 50-50s. That comes in the form of good passing, you know, like right exactly like what I'm talking about. Like, you know, making sure everything you're doing is executed perfectly. It's Katie DeSimone. That ball just barely got across the goal line, but it counts just the same. And Duke, two consecutive goals now for the first time this game, and we got a tie game. Yep. That was real nice ball, real nice ball movement, composure. Um, I believe it's Ava Greco comes around, she sees De Simone. Again, De Simone puts her body on the line and then puts it past, rolls past uh, Schweitzer and rolls into the goal. You know, and it, all goals count, whether they're go, whether they're going at two miles an hour or 200 miles an hour. Just um, off her foot, too. Yeah, but you know, the thing is about De Simone is, you know, she shoots in a crowd. She had three players on her right just then. You know, she doesn't mind. She's, she, in fact, I think she likes it, you know? Yeah, she, if, you, if you watched her highlight tape, you'd probably see the majority of the goals with contact. She gets banged around, but you know what? She either gets a goal or she gets a free position and then has a chance to score. So. This is exactly what they wanted. To, they wanted to be here, and they're saying every single minute that it goes by, we're not going away. Team leading 28th goal on the season for De Simone, her first today. And that's six different goal scorers for the six goals that Duke has put on the board. Once again, the draw is scooped up that time by Natalie Smith, and here comes Syracuse. The Orange trying to retake the lead. They have not trailed at all today. Duke has a little momentum right now. Ground balls again. That was a little bit of a collision. Absolutely, Natalie Smith. I don't think that there was anything intentional there. It just looked like it was a collision of sorts. Natalie Smith, you, there you see Maddie Johnston, the red shirt senior for Duke, getting up as well. Both players appear to be okay, I'm Natalie not, Smith. I'm not sure if they're going to call it. It was definitely inadvertent, um, and outside of the f outside of the 12. So, no, it doesn't look like they're going to do any yellow. I think it's just they call it looking at it as, as a collision. Both players up. Natalie Smith may be a little slow, moving right now. I, I like I like those kind of calls though. Those non calls because you know sometimes the refs take over a game, and that was one of those things where. You know, no one was even like did, those two players didn't even see each other, um, so that's a good call because you want you want it, these teams to earn those things through penalties that are real, um, and then free positions. But we don't want you don't want a game where the refs take over and uh, don't let the players play. Adamson up top, Cockerell, a couple of goals here, today. Here, Dodge, she's just got such a presence so hard with her you know she turns her shoulders how are you going to get the ball away from her that was a beautiful check right as i'm saying that you know duke comes up with that kind of that that, that kind of uh, high quality check but what boy was that a terrific terrific and timely check okay conway comes up with it couldn't tell if that was missy viscardi that knocked it away but either way it's a turnover for duke and a chance now 
to take its first lead today. They had multiple opportunities there in the first half to do so as that game kind of went back and forth and alternated, but ultimately unable to ever regain or gain the lead. So well, we'll see. I mean, right now, what, what are they doing right now? And it's clear they're valuing the ball, value the ball, you know, and I can't say that enough. You know, that was the one thing they, that Coach Kimmel said, and they're really doing that. Now, you know, they're taking care of it. They're making judicious passes from behind the cage. Let's see what happens right now with Ava Greco. She's got the ball. She's being chased um, quite, quite aggressively. Um, and Blue, Blue Devils and Lexi Schmalt set it up. 6-6 six, six game here in the third. Duke 0-3 in the ACC this year. Lost three straight, some tight games the last two times out. Chance here, though, yep. against number two, Syracuse. Sometimes, you know, sometimes that, 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 that can, you know, fire a team up. You know, if you've lost three games, uh, two of them by a goal, um, you're like, guys, you know, what are we doing here? Let's, let's, let's get it together. And it can, it can spark a, a great game. So let's see where this goes. Maybe that's what's going on here. Four seconds. McCorkle's got to get a shot off. She'll try to, but it just floats into the net of Schweitzer, and Syracuse turns Duke away. And that was another non. That was a non-call right there. That I, I actually think it was fine. You know, um, sort of a desperation shot. She fell down more than she was fouled on that one. So, um, you know, I like, like I said, I, I like to see the refs. You know, staying out of the game. It, it was a, that was a good call. Let them let play. Pretty even, 15 shots to 14. Duke has a slight advantage there. 11 to 10 on target for Syracuse with the small advantage. You know, what you haven't seen in this game is what Syracuse, both men and women, are sort of famous for is, is this run and gun transition game. Uh, where you have a ton of fast breaks that lead to uh, you know, uneven, you know, uh, you know, four on threes, th three on two kind of goals, and that's something that um, the contact there, Miss Missy Biscardi lost her lost stick, her stick. <laughs> right there in the middle. She's able to track it down there. Yeah, so she she's not allowed to play without her stick, and so it was smart for her to back off on that. If she plays without her stick and gets involved with the play, it's interference. Oh, there you see the beautiful attack of Carney. Yeah. Four goals today. Yeah. Megan Carney, four or more goals now in seven of nine games this year. Gives Syracuse another lead. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Megan Carney uses her speed right here. She looks up, she accelerates, she doesn't have a player on her. And then all of a sudden she comes in, beautiful shot, hugging the pipe. And, you know, look at her up. She's fired up, right? She wants to win, and she's going to the goal. No one's going to stop her. Kind of get the sense she, she saw that opening when she turned the corner, and she delivered. Yeah, I mean, with the difference between her and Cockrell, Cockrell comes around the cage, and she's putting her shoulder down and using her body. And she's also a bit fast, but with Carney, Carney is, is just puts in you know, the next gear. And once she got to goal line extended, she was ready to shoot, boom, already. So Syracuse will put Maddie Baxter out there in the circle against Maddie Jenner. Duke with a 9-5 advantage on the draws today. But Syracuse continues to just, every time Duke pulls back and evens it up, they find a way to regain the lead. Yeah, well, you're gonna you're gonna expect that. I mean, I mean Syracuse is not gonna go away. They're well coached. They've been in a lot of tough. They've had a lot a lot of the games, you know, that we that we look at in, their, in the early part of their season, were, were, were against great teams and close. So you know, um, the speed by Duke there, Veronica Hyman able to track it down and she forced win it. she for, she forced the uh, the. Um, Duke's got the advantage now quickly. The Bellis goes to the ground, took a big contact yeah. there, trying to get it to DeSimone. Probably not the, no, even though it was tempting to throw that pass and try to get that open player, um, the goalie was right on it. She was ready, Schweitzer was ready to come out and get that. So um, probably, you know, good that it went through for Duke. And, you know, now they have to they have to counter punch right now. So, you know, this is, this is the thing. Composure, value the ball, counter punch. Duke setting it up under 60 on the shot clock. Down 7-6. Seven, six. six different goal scorers today for the Blue Devils. Going against the Syracuse defense, eighth nationally in goals allowed per game. We've seen why. 
Schweitzer with four saves today. They've caused four turnovers. And get the whistle. So, so I, I, be, I believe that was, uh, that, that was three, three seconds. It was completely off ball. It was on this side of the cage. Um, I believe that was a three-second violation. The defender can't hang out in the middle of the crease for more than for more than three seconds. It'll be Hindman now. Again, Duke, one for four in free position opportunities in the first half. Can they change that today? They'll they're, pass it out. They're, look, they're looking for the better shot, and 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 that's not a, it's not a bad idea. Oh, great look in front that time for Duke. It was Ainsley Thurston, but. Schweitzer's right there. Schweitzer uh, made a really nice save, but you know, Duke, that was good. You know, the, in terms of variety, mixing up the shots, and that was one that was the low, uh, a low shot, sort of offside stick. Uh, I'm sorry, stick side, low shot, but it was nice that they the, that that was they're shooting low and trying to mix it up a bit, as I've been saying before. So Syracuse now. Still unable to see one team take control of this game. It's been a well-played game from start to finish. Here comes Natalie Smith. She'll take a shot, and she'll find the, go the goal as well. How about the Syracuse Orange 8-6? Yeah, so it was a beautiful individual effort, really. I think the, def the Duke defender didn't have their hands. We'll see on the replay that the didn't really have the, uh, their body position, her hands right on on the uh, player. And she just got a step on her and was able, right there, she got a step and was able to get that shot off. Um, and it was, you know, it was stick side, but well placed against the, the far post. Seventh goal of the year for Natalie Smith. She's got an assist today as well. So she looks to be in good shape after taking that big collision earlier where she was moving a little, maybe a little gingerly, but yeah. nothing gingerly about that. Yeah, I mean, again, if this is the thing with, with, with Syracuse. If, it, if, it's, if it's not, you know, Terrell, if it's not Carney, if it's not, you know, Cockerell, then, it, then it's Smith. And, you know, so many weapons you have to guard against. Can you do it for four quarters? That's, that's, the, that's the thing about, you know, the challenge here and right, playing against the number two ranked team in the country. Baxter and Jenner again. Baxter's able to fling it over to a teammate, Goodell, who takes it down. And Syracuse looking for its largest lead today. You know, you think about this, though. Recently, Emma Ward had, was it, eight points, right? Um, or she had a goal. She had, might have a game where she had eight goals. It was one of the, one or the other, but she's been relatively silent, right, t today. Um, and it's not, not, it's not because she can't score, because she can. It's just that they've been moving the ball around and had a lot of other players are participating. There you go. Emma yeah. Ward on the scoreboard now. The goal there for her, her first today, to go along with an assist. She's been very good this year. 38 points so far this season. So they obviously, they called this play. They obviously saw some kind of matchup where they thought that, that Emma Ward could uh, benefit, and they cleared everyone out, so the slide was so long. And with Emma Ward, you know, you really can't cover her well when she starts to dodge with just one player. It's just too hard because she has a cannon of a shot that she can release very quickly. Yeah, Ward's had a great year so far. There you see, co-offensive player of the week. There's the game you were mentioning, eight points, seven assists against Notre Dame. Yeah, just, a, just an incredible game, and, and, and like I said, like, she, she she would be the whole offense for many other teams, right? But she, on, on Syracuse, she's just one key player, and um, that's that's their the, what do they say the, embar the embarrassment of riches, you know? I think Syracuse has, and uh, Duke's going to have to figure out that. Um, that was a trip with possession. Um, I I am actually surprised. Well, it is it was an un inadvertent foul, but a lot of times they call. They call it yellow. Now, in this case, they're calling a green card, which is a delay of game. And what they're saying is, is that Syracuse did not give the ball up in, in, in a timely manner back to Duke to start. So they delay the game. That's a green card. Two minutes, uh, non-releasable. It'll be one minute for one minute. One minute. 
for Syracuse. It's Katie Goodell. But now they feel like this is a shot. I mean, Duke's got to take advantage of this now, right? Down 9-6, largest lead of the game for Syracuse. There's a lot of time. Uh, there's, there's, there is a lot of time. And so, you know, what you want to do is just chip away at this. And, you know, maybe Duke, uh, maybe Duke wins this 10-9, you know, but the, and with this quarter and the next quarter. So, there, you know, you can't, uh, you can't let your emotions take it over because then you start making bad passes. Keep doing what you're doing, one goal at a, t at a time. Lacrosse is a game where you can score multiple goals in a two-minute period, and, you know, composure is everything. So that was an example of maybe rushing it a little bit. Um, the Syracuse, you see why it's so tough to, to score on them, that defense hounding Duke so far, and need to take advantage of those opportunities. Still plenty of time, but, Duke, but Syracuse does not make it easy to score. And they had a three-goal lead now, trying to just burn this penalty. This is a really nice pass. Nice, nice way to break that clear. Goodell's released. Here's a chance now. Some space. Adamson. She finishes. The orange extending its lead now. 10-6. Yeah, the beautiful, beautiful transition. That was uh, what we were sort of talking about before. When when would we start to see that show up? The transition of Syracuse. See it, it starts with that defense and then Adamson finds the open shot there. Yeah, she came with a really nice fake and then delivered on it, offside stick, beautiful shot, tons of power. This game was all tied up 6-6 here in the third, but Syracuse, undefeated on the year, has gone on a four goal run and taken control of this one. Yes, yeah, so you know, this is the thing, Syracuse is capable of, the, capable of this and they wanted to try, their key is to how do they limit it right now? They just changed the goalie, so Fia LaRose is in. Um, she's a you know veteran goalie, so let's see where this goes. Sometimes that's a signal to the defense um, and um, you know, in order to sort of just reset things. LaRose, a lot of experience, been dealing with some medical issues. She's only started twice this year, only 75 minutes played, so been working her way back in practice. Coach Kimmel's said she's, you know, been making progress to getting back. Uh, not sure we expected to see her necessarily today, but but Duke, uh, I guess she feels good enough and they feel confident in her to put her back there. Yeah, there's a ton of time right here, you know, so I, I know it's one of those things where Duke's, Duke's got the ball and, you know, if they chip away right now, and get it close to even or even, which is very possible with six minutes left, then then you're talking about, you know, who's gonna win the, that battle in the fourth quarter that I've been talking about ad nauseum today. Well, Duke, plenty of time, but needed to try to chip away at this thing. Down four, they only have three goals since the first. They had evened this thing up with five minutes to go through. It was three, three with five minutes to go in the first, and Duke just three goals since. You see that lockdown defense by Syracuse. DeSimone with just one goal today, the team leader for Duke. All six goals scored by different players. They're being nice and patient. Jenner a chance in front. She gets knocked off a little bit away from Cage, but yeah, I, I, I actually it. I saw a little bit of a push in there. They're, you know, they're crowding her quite a bit to the point where you know, I think the rest would, if I was a coach, I'd be complaining a little bit about some of that. But, you know, again, I've been saying let them play, but there, there is a point at which um, they, they should be uh, potentially calling some of those. Here's Keller, 15 seconds, looking for a teammate. That went off the cage. Off roll the right cage. out in front, and Cockrell's right there. Yeah. Here comes Syracuse. In transition once again, we've seen them score off of this. Pressure applied to Cockrell. Yeah, I think that's actually a smart foul right there just to slow it down. Uh, you know, Syracuse, if they distribute the ball and get it around the backside and then attack from the backside, that's a that's a classic sort of uh, fast break that they want to avoid. And um, that was a nice, that was a good, probably smart foul. Doesn't cost you anything. Gives Syracuse a chance now to run a little clock up four. Four goal, four straight goals for the Orange. Okay. LaRose in case she'll face her first shot here, but it's a goal. This time, Emma Tyrell.
That's a tough one to start with for LaRose. He got one-on-one -on -one basically with Tyrell. Very difficult for the goalie. Yeah, I mean, what, what you're seeing there is, and we'll see it here on the, on the replay, but one, one, of, one of the things is just the foot speed, the quick, like, left to right, bam. And, then, you know, that happened 10 feet, 12 feet out from the goal, and it just allowed her great stick protection, brings it back, and then puts it right off the side of her left, of, of her right hip. Um, not much that Terrell, that, um, that so so Sophia LaRose could do about that, um, but there was no slide, really, that could could even get there quick enough. Tyrell third on the team in goal. She's got 18 now, the senior in Syracuse now. All of a sudden up five. Duke now looking for an answer. It started in the draw, 12-6 advantage. Long away, but it will go to Duke. Blue Devils in need of a goal. Yeah, one at a time, you know, they should Keep, keep keep their expectations a little uh, managed right now emotionally. Um, if they pick up two or three goals right now, um, they're right back in it. D. Simone back behind, working it around. Duke with 17 shots today. Here's Schmaltz, she has one of the goals. And not Duke, not in a hurry. No, high quality possessions right now. There's four minutes in this quarter. There's only another quarter after this. So, you know, this is this is by totally doable for Duke. But they just have to manage their emotions, manage their execution. Callahan over to Schmaltz. She gets doubled. Drops it off in front is De Simone. She's doubled as well. Triple team knocked away and taken by Syracuse. You see the defense causing another turnover. Yeah, tight passes in there. They're trying those tight passes. There's a risk that comes with that. Um, but, you know, it was working in the beginning in the first and second quarter. Um, and um, they just need to be, make, the, make those passes a little bit more uh, clean in order to get the shot off. Well, Syracuse locked in on both ends of the field right now. Defense has been tremendous this quarter. The offense has five straight goals. Pressure on Duke now to get a stop. Here's Tyrell scored the last goal. She's got Piscardi defending. The spin move. Great recovery. Good help defensively. This time, though, Carney, Carney bounces one in. LaRose goes to her knees to save that one. Yeah, beautiful save by LaRose. She saw that. She read that. Okay, so right there, the Syracuse player kicked the ball. And maybe inadvertently, but that was sometimes a condition for a, uh, for a green card. The much needed stop by the Duke defense. Two minutes to go here in the third. You know, a, a goalie change can spark a lot of things. Um, and it's something that is, um, it's almost hard to explain, but it, it happens. And it, that's why coaches do it. So let's see where this goes. Uh, but Sophia LaRose is a known, known, known uh, part of the team and a veteran and an amazing player. So hopefully for the Devils, she can continue to get in front of that ball. A lot of times that defense turns into offense. We've seen it today. Here's D. Simone over to Schmaltz. Duke still looking for a good shot. Here's Schmaltz, maybe an opportunity, but it's thrown behind her and it gets away. Another turnover for Duke. Yeah. So, so, you, so here's Baxter right now. Watch her go. She, gets, she plays for the Team Canada. Amazing player. Ty Tyrell gives it off to Ward in the center of the shot. She scores. Ward the somersault after the finish, and Syracuse has doubled up Duke. What a goal by Ward in the transition to your point. Baxter kind of keyed it. That is Syracuse transition right there. Baxter coming in.
completely unselfish, passes the ball off to Tyrell. Tyrell threads the needle with, the, you know, just an amazing pass, and then Ward there to finish. She's just incredible. If you, she gets the ball on her stick, um, you got to watch out. And you know, where does she place it? Only in, you know, only in the upper right corner. You know, um, Sophia L Rose doesn't have a chance with that you know, that close in. She's right on the doorstep. Upper 90 by Ward, and she's got a couple of goals today. But Syracuse now in firm control. Six straight goals for the Orange. And Duke looking to finish off this final minute of this quarter, maybe trying to pick away because, to your point, you can score a lot of goals, but you don't want to head to the fourth down six against the Syracuse team. No, and 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 the, and the reason why is because, like in basketball, you can they'll 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 slough off on defense, they'll close it in, they'll, they'll lock down, and so they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna play a very conservative defensive game that'll make it hard for you to have any shots. Well, contact Hyman went down but they're going to reward Syracuse here with the ball so a little contact on the circle that time but Syracuse now can just work this clock all the way down to end the third quarter and really take control with one more goal Duke's defense trying to step up Syracuse has been back and forth, has never let Duke lead, and then has finally started to pull away here in the third. A 6-1 to one goal advantage for Syracuse this quarter. Yeah, I think right now, you know, you want to try to make a stop here and then regroup. Um, the game still has a lot of time, but this, this has been a story of a classic Syracuse run. Ten seconds. Here's Tyrell. She goes low underneath LaRose. You see Syracuse putting it on Duke right now, 13 to six. Not what Duke needed there, but you see Tyrell, just a beautiful finish again. Yeah, I mean, again, an embarrassment of riches. There's weapons everywhere. If it's not one Tyrell, it's the other. Um, the quick left to right dodge, and then all of a sudden just un shooting off the back of her back foot. Beautiful placement, and LaRose makes an awesome effort to try to stop that, but you know, you're talking, you know, these are these are players that are like all world kind of players, some of these uh, guys in Syracuse, and they uh, they don't miss shots. Tyrell, couple of goals today. That's five different multi-goal scorers for the Orange. As this third quarter winds down. Got another whistle here. Not sure of the call. But it's going to be a tough spot for Duke heading into this fourth, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I think a couple things need to happen. Among other things, um, Sophia's got to you know, make some big saves. She's already had a couple. Um, and Duke basically is going to have to win almost most of the draws in the fourth quarter um, in order to control possession. They've, they've gotten the ball down there. You know, in the first half, you saw some beautiful plays. They were getting the feeds into the crease. And to, in, in the third quarter, they just they weren't as productive making accurate passes into the crease area. And that, 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 I think that's the big difference in the game. Well, the green card goes to Superior Clark. And Duke now with eight seconds. We'll see if they can get a shot off here to finish this third quarter. Is, is, there's a lot of rules in, uh, <laughs> in, in women's lacrosse that, you know, slow the, can slow the game down a little bit sometimes. We're going to call well off the ball as they were about to have the draw. But here, final seconds. Can you do fire off one shot as that one is thrown away? Oh. And that will end it for the third quarter. Coach Trainer's team feeling pretty good right now on top of Duke, 13-6. to six. And this Orange team having a lot of fun right now, taking control. Yeah, when you look, you're looking at some of the best lacrosse that Syracuse has probably played um, all year right now um, against a really talented Duke team. Syracuse will take a 13-6 advantage to this final 15 minutes here on ACC Network. We had a back and forth game throughout until that third quarter. Syracuse, this game was 6-6, and then Syracuse ran, rolled off seven straight goals, including one late in the third to take a 13-6 advantage. And we highlighted their numbers coming in. The attack, one of the best in the country. We're seeing it today. 
Yeah, they, again, they, 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 there's so many different areas where you have to guard against them, and it's an, an exhausting exercise. So when we talk about how do you beat a Syracuse, how do you beat a BC, you have to do it for, fourth, for all four quarters. And this, in case, the, you know, the seven, having a 7-1 third quarter um, really sets you up for uh, almost an insurmountable, I will say, at this point. But uh, it's possible um, victory for the Devils. So um, let's let's see where it goes. But um, it's um, they got to really do some quick scoring right now. Five assists on 13 goals for Syracuse. But probably more importantly, the offense has looked really good, but the defense has also stepped up. They, they gave up three goals in the first, but since that time, it's been they've locked down on Duke, including right now. Duke going on a near, what, almost a quarter since scoring last. Yeah, they clogged the center up a lot. And then, you know, they made Duke feed from the sides. If you saw a lot of those feeds that were knocked down and they were they were pressing out on the defenders and making them feed from the outside. Um, and, it, they, and, it, and it created a little bit of, a, of frustration and uncertainty for them. Duke scored his third goal with five minutes to go in the first. So about 35 minutes, Duke's managed just three goals against the Syracuse team. But they've got possession early. And at this point, you almost you don't have to score every possession, but you have to score early to give yourself a chance later. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, right now, if if they need they need to get to at the ten minute mark, they need to score at least like t maybe two couple goals at least. Um, and then you know, again, with the, with with th this game being the way it is, you know, free positions are everything. So a few calls from the refs. You know, the only way that it's going to happen though is they have to dodge and really draw some of those fouls. They have to really dodge and draw those fouls and, and do it in a way where, you know. In front is Keller. She gets it knocked away. D. Simone's right there, though, to put it away. Beautiful. Duke needed a goal to start with the advantage to begin the quarter, and D. Simone fortunate to get the, the ball right in front of the cage, and she puts it home for a second today. Yeah, that was a really nice opportunistic play. They were trying to feed it in there. Uh, Katie Keller had it. Um, she got, the, got it knocked away. I believe it was Keller. Yeah, Keller was there, as you said, got it knocked away, but it fell right to De Simone. Yeah, got it, got it knocked away, and then got it shot off right here, coming there, opportunistic. You gonna give her an assist for that one? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think actually Syracuse gets the assist. They checked her stick. Um, I actually think that they could have called a foul, you know, with that. Her stick was that was right up above her head when they checked Keller's stick. So we'll see where that, you know, where that heads. Well, De Simone will take it, so will Duke. 13-7 now. And Duke always has that wild card with Maddie Jenner, right? If it's all about in women's lacrosse. You have that opportunity to string together multiple possessions. And Duke's doubled up Syracuse, 15-7 on the draws. Yeah. But now no more advantage for Duke as Superior Clark served her time. And was released. Nice, nice gutsy, gutsy ground ball play. Syracuse comes up with it. And there's Clark. You see, maybe the best athlete on this team. You see her speed. The freshman brings it over. Yeah. But loses it right away. And a foul called. So Syracuse now with it back. First step. Win control of the ball. They've done that. Carney leading the way for Syracuse today with four goals. Emma Tyrell has two. Cockrell has two as well, as does Emma Ward. We've seen kind of their core rise up that third quarter. Carney got them started, but we've seen wave after wave of the Syracuse attack. One of the best in the country. Duke's defense now. Here's Tyrell again, straight to Cage. You see the speed and the accuracy. And despite the contact, she goes down. But we'll see what the call is here. Duke does have in its third goalie today is freshman Madison Drebbing starting this quarter. A call here on Maddie Johnston. We're going to take a look to see what happened here. Here's Tyrell kind of holding her side. You see her. She took some contact there, but yeah. what a finish. 
Yeah, she's put her body on the line here. Coming in, dodging, and then pulling it out. It was sort of a face dodge, and then a Twizzler shot. Um, I don't know how she, she, I think she got hit on the side of the head, possibly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things where the player was really rushing in in order to, to play, and I think she just got her stick a little bit high right there. Um, the second one coming in, number 13. Yeah, it looked like she got up around the shoulder. I think they had come down on top of her after the contact, but yeah. Tyrell is just dang, so dangerous. In her career, though, I've seen her use, again, almost like D, D. Simone's the same thing. Both Tyrell sisters use their body when they're going to the cage, and they're very dangerous. And, um, you know, they, 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 they are very effective because of that. That goal gives her 20 on the season. Joining her sister and Megan Carney. 320 goal scorers this year so far for Syracuse. Still talking it over. Coach Kimmel will get the explanation on the side. Yeah, Syracuse answers the bell there Tyrell coming up big I don't know if coach Kimmel like agrees with the call we are we are we are reviewing the goal still talking and it's being reviewed yeah it seemed like a little bit of momentum that Duke might have gotten there to start the quarter Defense unable to stop the Syracuse team. It just, they're tough. And they got a lot of speed, a lot of talent. So they're going to actually give it to Cubby Viscardi. We saw the contact there was Maddie Johnston who made, who checked Tyrell as she was going to cage. So they're reviewing to see if it was a goal or not. Yeah, there's a lot going on on this play. You know, whether it was a it was a foul to the head, whether it was a goal, whether it was pushing the crease. Here it is one more time. Uh, she stepped on the line. It looks like ball goes in. Ball's ball's already in. So ball's in the back of the net, and her foot is, hits the crease. Um, now the question is, what she pushed? Yeah, and also was there any uh, to you know any any reckless stuff to the head? So it looks like judging by the reaction on the sideline for Syracuse that this goal will hold up, and that as you pointed out, it looked like it did cross before that contact. So the goal confirmed for Tyrell and the Orange. Lead now back to seven as they still discuss it. Yeah, sometimes, you know, all the refs are watching the play and they don't see exactly when the ball goes into the net. So it might have been one of those things where they had to go and review it or at least discuss it in that, re in that regard. Um, but, um, you know, again, these the, the Syracuse team, almost every player, they put their body on the line when they go to the goal. And it's really tough to avoid that, um, to, to guard. Sometimes a foul happens. With that penalty, Syracuse will have possession here to start. Tyrell had a great has had a great season so far. Only one game she's been held goalless. She had just one goal as well against Loyola last time out, but other than that, it's been a great season for her. She ha now has. Three today, a hat trick. Joining Carney in that group. The Orange now up 14-7. Maybe a chance. Another goal. It's never over. Well, it's hard to get. Yeah, if you're doubled up by Syracuse in, at this level, you know, if you could be doubled up, you know, with six to three in the fourth quarter, that's one thing. But being doubled up 14 to seven. Is, is really tough. I mean, again, I think that the big, the, the backbreaker on this one was the third quarter and a lot of in errant feeds that went into the, the middle that was broken up. And 
Um, you just cannot do that and survive against uh, this against the Syracuse team. Syracuse still with the advantage here too. So Duke not out of the woods yet. Cockrell up top. Syracuse closing in on goal. See the poise they have, you know, when they when they when they moving it around. Everyone touches the ball. They know exactly where each other are, and you know. there, there's Carney. They Ward knew exactly where she was. Yeah. How about it for Carney? Add one more to her total today, and that will give her five. You know, and when you when you're watching this, it's 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 you know it's sort of like really watching a textbook textbook play on how to move the ball. Um, with precision, everyone knowing where everyone should be, everyone knows what kind of responsibilities they have in terms of where they should be located and who's going to ultimately maybe take the shot. And um, I'm not saying it was a play, it's more of a set. You know, they have a set that they run and they feel the rhythm as it's going. And, um, you know, Carney is just having a breakout day today. Carney's been pretty consistent so far. This does match her season high. She had five goals against Albany. And then all but one other game, she's had four goals. So she's been a model consistency, all but two games rather. But she's had multiple goals in every game so far. She's got five today yeah. to lead Syracuse. And, and when you think about the Syracuse team, for the last three years, they've had an amazing roster, but they always have like one or two people that are real, that are injured that are out, right? And right now, um, other than Mascheski, they basically have a, a healthy team. It's a really scary proposition if you're in the ACC playing against a healthy Syracuse team. Sure is. Cockrell started the first five games last year before she got injured. Emma Ward was out for the year as well with injury. Those two back and key contributors as we've seen today. But Syracuse wins draw and back in control. Oh, guess who has the ball? <laughs> Carney once again. I, I mean, guess at this point with Syracuse, they're just going to try to run clock, right? Well, sometimes when you're when you're an attacker like she is and she's having a day, she's having she's like. Give me the ball, coach. You know, <laughs> give me the ball. I want, you know, I want, I want to have it. So, um, good for her. You know, this, this you know, you got to love the sport. Watching great lacrosse being played, and you know, it's a beautiful sunny day here, and this is just watch. This is a treat watching these two teams. You know, as good as Syracuse has been over the course of their history, the win today gives them a nine zero start. Never happened before for the Syracuse team. So, yeah. still reaching kind of new heights. Yeah. Yeah, new heights with the new coach who's an alma mater and, you know, understands the Syracuse culture, understands, you know, how important lacrosse is to the city of Syracuse and the whole up upstate New York region. And, um, you know, this is, this is, it's a great tradition on the men's side and a great tradition on the women's side. The yellow card, as you see, Assess the Biscardi. We'll take a look at what happened. Yeah, it looks like it looks just over the head. You know, you're looking at something where it's 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 on foul, either too close to the head or not. But um, they call that pretty quick nowadays. Yeah, it looks a little inadvertent, but still, they always all about player safety. Yeah, yeah. And we're seeing that. You know, the I think a lot of these rules they put in related to that are try are really aimed at and hopefully are effective at reducing concussions that we, you know, we've seen for many years. So another advantage once again for Syracuse. Adamson up top. You know, we've seen the orange be patient, surveying, finding a teammate. Adamson was right there, but maybe misplaced. And Duke comes away with it. It's Madison Beal, the freshman, drops it off. Here comes Duke, trying to score in transition. Have to score fast right now. So we wind down to the final 10 minutes of this game. Yeah, Syracuse yeah, transition defense back in, in place. Yeah, I, don't, I think Duke's, you know, they're trying to set up right now, um, you know, do you do you rush it and try to you know get a get a run going, or do you try to do one by one just chipping chipping away? It's a it's a lot of work to do to get back in this game, especially down a player right now. Trying to get that back to all square, but the sacrifice time in the mean 
in the interim. Nine and a half minutes to go. B. Simone, a couple of goals today. She leads this Duke team. You know, when I look look at this game in general, and I look at what you know, what, what, is, what are the key differences, is I think that Schweitzer's ability to stop at key at key parts of the game, her ability to stop uh, Duke goals when we, when the game was you know by one or two, that was that was really some key parts of this game today. Yeah, no doubt. Bad pass thrown away there. Riley Trainer tried to track it down, but it goes out on Duke and Syracuse now. Chance to just kind of wind this thing down. We see Schweitzer oh. with a long pass, but little it gets too, away from Adamson. Yeah, a little, little, little too much on that one. Not a whole lot of mistakes today by Syracuse. They've been pretty buttoned up on both ends. Yeah. Timeout called here, 15 to seven. Syracuse in control, number two, Orange. Beautiful day to soak up the weather here in Koskinen Stadium. Even our furry friends are doing so. Well, Syracuse, 8 0 on the road at Duke. A tight game last time out against Loyola. You wonder maybe how they come into this one. Well, they've been the aggressor, as you've seen today. Yeah, I think Syracuse has really been able to force those turnovers, those Duke turnovers, um, especially clogging up that middle, the middle lanes um, in, their, in their defensive sets. And, and at the same time, they, they played very aggressive. I mean, you can see there's 25 fouls. Um, they're, they're, not, they're not shy about going after Duke. Well, Schweitzer's been a big part of that. She's been lights out as, again. I mean, she's been that way all year long, but today she's been great between the pipes. Yeah, with goalies, it's interesting because sometimes, you know, you maybe you say you look at their save percentages or you how many saves they have. But there's one this statistic that's really important, which is saves in key moments, right? And I think that Schweitzer had enough saves in key moments that really made the difference today. Because the, those are periods when we were up, the, where Duke was up by you know one or or down by one, and and um, she came up really big saves um, that weren't easy. Yeah, no doubt, a couple of big free position saves, as well as a couple right in front of the cage. She's done a great job, and part of the reason why Syracuse is up 15-7. Yeah. And it just could be, for an offense, it could be demoralizing at a certain point, you know, where you just like, you know, can't, why, why can't that ball just go in, you know? And um, she sort of put a lid on some of those opportunities. DeBellish pushed off the ball there by Chevary. Don't remain in possession. And even with that, you know, not only is it she doing it defensively, but that has turned into offense as we've seen today too. Yeah, some quick offense. You know, they always say that, you know, the goalie is the first offensive player. You know, it's a really, it's an old saying, but it's true. Because if you can stop the ball now, right now, you know, they're technically on offense. And the goalie's going to, you know, lead that charge down the field many times with quick outlet passes and things of that nature. Looks like De Simone lost it there. And now Syracuse can just run the rest of this clock out. But D Duke almost comes up with a steal, but yeah. the foul called. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a gritty play, you know, trying to get the ball back. Um, you're going to see that. There's a little frustration going on right now, too. You know, these girls are all competitive. And, you know, they're working hard uh, all game, all week, really, to prepare for this. And, uh, you know, they're trying to do their very best game possession. 6.45. Here comes Syracuse. Maddie looking, to add, looking to add to the lead. It's Carney. Jump shot saved by the freshman. How about Drebbing coming up there. Yeah, beautiful. Read it. She did a little question mark dodge there. Came around um, and you know it was able to get a lot of power on it, but um, Drebbing was right there. So that was real, real, real nice, real nice save. They're trying to get the clear. It's Maddie Johnson being chased. Good ride by Syracuse. Yeah, Duke's not giving up. They're, they're in there. They're in it to win it. They're going to continue to push it. There's McCorkle. Six minutes remaining. Said Duke trying to keep clawing away. Well, you know, and also this, the score matters in you know, in terms of you know, when you look at how these games are judged and you know how close they were and things of that nature. There's a nice another opportunity. Um, Syracuse just frustrated it that, that shot at the last second, which forced the Duke uh, attacker to take a little bit off of it. 
looked like it was going in. Another pass gets away from Syracuse. Scooped up. It'll be Duke ball. Duke will have a chance maybe to get back on track a little bit again. Not, not what they expected coming into the year. High hopes for this team. Lost today, drops into four and five, 0 and four in the conference. But chance against East Carolina and Pittsburgh coming up the next two games to close out March. How how important is this final just five minutes? You know, score. You know what it what it is what it is. Just to put together a few possessions here, score a couple goals, and just build on something positive going into yeah, the I mean, next this, game. You know, when they look at this game, this game was not like a blowout. This game was a, go a game that where they had one bad quarter. Um, they held with them for the first half very, very well. And, you know, now they're in a, a sort of for frustrating fourth quarter. You know, at the end of the day, this game will end if, you know, Syracuse wins. And they'll, they'll use this as a, well, what did we do right in that first half in order to go against East Carolina, Eastern Carolina, in order to go against Pitt and Virginia Tech? DeSimone, a free position. Saw her get knocked down. She'll jab, step, spin, move. Shot up top, and she scores. DeSimone, beautiful goal. She had to work for that one. She beat Schweitzer high. Yeah, she's, she's going to really be uh, happy with that shot. She came around, switched up, left hand, and then put it right on the pipe. Top shelf shot, beautiful. Just inches underneath that crossbar for D. Simone, and that's a hat trick today for her. The junior out of New York. She's been a scoring machine for this Duke team. Yeah, I mean, so back to what we were talking about, though. When you look at this as, you know, as a component of their record, right? This is what you would call if, if Duke winds up losing and they lose, say, 15 to 10 or what have you. That's not a bad loss to the second ranked team in the country. You know, that's the, and especially if you watch the, you know, people watch this game, they know that the Duke held with them for every, most of this game other than one quarter, right? Right. So I think that that's what you take away with it too. This, is, this wasn't like a game that was a, a runaway by Syracuse at all. Um, but but you can't have a bad quarter against Syracuse. Right. You just, you just can't. That's the key. A 7-1 Syracuse advantage in that third quarter has been the difference in yep. this game. Yep. Otherwise, we'd be having a completely different conversation right now in these final few minutes. But Yeah, and against the second-ranked BC team last year, right around a little bit later in the year than this time, they needed they needed to win that game and to keep their standing in the, you know, where they were in the ACC. And they didn't have a – BC didn't have a runaway quarter, you know. And then Duke wound up getting into the final minutes and winning the game. So they know how to do it. Um, a lot of those players were there. It's just that both – you know, you, it's, it's a hard thing to do. And – Obviously, Emma Ward puts a capstone on that statement. Yeah, Emma Ward beats Drebbing on the nearest post for another goal for her. And it's just Syracuse has been locked in today uh, across the board. We've seen it everywhere. And that's a hat trick for Ward. Yeah, Emma Ward senses that she's got the body position and she's got the speed. She's very deceptive speed. Um, she goes in and she uh, almost has a step on her right away. And as she's a lights out shooter. She's a sniper. Um, from out, she, she, she has a huge wind up shot, you know, the, the, but she from like free positions, but she also up and in, in close. She can ping corners like no one's business. We just saw it there. Quick flick of the wrist. And yeah. Wrist yeah. and that thing was right by Drebbing. Yeah. So hat trick for her along with Emma Tyrell and Meg Carney. And this is a 16-8 game. Syracuse in a lower scoring game last time out, a 9-7 win against Loyola. But otherwise, this year, they've scored 15 or more goals in every game outside of that last one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. People don't look at, won't look at this score and say, you know, oh, my God, this is a, you know, that was a horrible, horrible effort by, by, by the Blue Devils. Um, they... they they're likely looking at things and saying, you know, this is this is a really incredible Syracuse team, and and to and it's going to be interesting to see when they are matched up against you know the Carolinas and the and the BCs and you know others Marylands going going forward in other games. Yeah, the Syracuse schedule sets up to where they finish the year at 
North Carolina April 15th, and then the final regular season game is at home against Boston College. So yeah. we'll get to see that to close out the year. Yeah, I mean, those are those are, those are are almost like final four kind of games at the end of the season. Um, you know, and the ACC is just rich with talent, so it's going to be interesting. And the way this, this Syracuse team looks, probably going to determine who wins the ACC there in those final that final week. Here's a free position opportunity for Duke, but that one turned away as Veronica Hyman with the shot. Final three minutes here. One more shot in front for Duke. It is a goal with contact. Syracuse has been physical today. I believe they're going to put a yellow card. Yeah, they're calling a yellow card on that. That was a cross check from behind into the crease. DeBellis, second goal today on three shots. She earned that one. 15 blue, yellow card. DeBellis has had a good season as a senior. That yellow card will be assessed to Natalie Smith, the junior. Take a look at that Caroline DeBellis goal one more time. Yeah, it was beautiful pass, came in, and you know, nice ball placement. It's sort of like what was going on in the second quarter. This is like they were finding the seams, and she received a cross check to the sort of shoulder neck region. Um, I, you know, it was inadvertent in a, in a way. You know, sometimes momentum carries a defender into doing that. I don't think it was malicious, but it did happen. So with that yellow card, Duke will have possession again. Down 16-9. So Duke's booked in this game, three goals in the first quarter and three goals in the fourth. Problem is just three goals in between that. But again, trying to close out this game on a high note. Yeah, need some quick scores, you know. Duke, the 15th ranked team in the country. Played a tough schedule. Obviously, the ACC, very challenging. Keep your eye on number 14. I think they're probably going to have her in there to. D. Simone fighting for space. She hits that one off see, the post. See her use her body, though. She's like always fighting. And she's just, you know, just so tenacious down there. Nice pass right in front. Greco, she goes down. But that's going to be a charge. Yeah, that was a interesting call by the refs. Don't necessarily know if I agree with that one. Tough call, and Syracuse now player down. Can try to burn that off and then run off this final two minutes. But I think the takeaway for me just watching the Syracuse team play is they are legit. We knew that coming in, but this has been a well-played game on all fronts today. They're solid at every part of the field. And again, it's because they're healthy. Um, they have a very deep roster. Um, and they, they, for one, you know, one time in the last three years, they're finally a healthy team. And it's, it's a scary proposition, to be honest with you. It is. And you know, even without Kate Mascheski, who is out for the year with lower body injury, and she has been their draw specialist, we've seen Syracuse. Yeah, all behind in that and, spot, and, even today. And they'll, but you know what they're going to do? They're going to, if that's their reality, right? They're going to figure out a way to compensate for that. They're going to have some players that are going to come in. They're going to change their strategy about the draw. And to Bellis, to De Simone, great grab on that, but she's unable to get the shot on target. I think it might have been a save off the, off the off Schweitzer stick. Under a minute to go here, final. Opportunity, Jenner will add one more to the board. Her second today. So a nice finish for Duke, if nothing else, 16-10 now. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know, you never, you're out here to play the whole game and they're, they're not giving up. And then you got to take your hats off to them. Just the fourth time all year that Syracuse has allowed double-digit goals, and this one to Jenner. Maddie, no one's going to be able to get up that high in order to prevent her from catching it, and she knows how to put it right in when she catches it. It's like a you know, like a uh, you know, a jump ball kind of thing, and there's no one that's going to going to be able to get that reach up there. 
Yeah, not many players would have caught that ball no. in this country. But, no, but she, <laughs> she, she, she also has quick, very powerful wrists. She can be able to take that at a high level and, and put it right in. And, um, you know, if you're a goalie, you're being literally shot down on at that point. Yeah, Jenner will always be known for what the work she does here in the draw, but she's worked so, put in a lot of time on her offense and her attack and her shooting, and it has paid off. She is currently second on the team in goals behind De Simone. Another ground ball eventually won by Emma Tyrell, and should just about do it for Syracuse. Up 16 to 10, a well-played game by the Orange. Yeah, a, de a decent game by by the Devils as well. You know, you're playing this. You're, you're ranked 15th. You're playing the second-ranked team in the nation, and you go into halftime. You know, in a very close game, and just have a you know one quarter where things didn't click, and that that was the difference maker. Seven one quarter, third third quarter. Final few seconds here for the Orange. 16-10. Will be our final score. And for Syracuse, number two in the country, they moved to 9 0 for the first time in school history. Just a great performance today. Yeah, I think you know it's this Syracuse team is could be uh, one of the best teams, if not the best team in the country. Um, considering also eight miles away is another team that's pretty darn good, which is UNC. It's just an exciting, exciting time of year to watch the ACC evolve. Well, Megan Carney leads the way. Five goals for Syracuse. De Simone had a hat trick, but it wasn't enough for Duke. For our entire crew, for David Keefe, I have been George. Your final here in Durham, 16-10. So long.